Well, hello there, my dear children of the apocalypse. How are we doing today? And welcome to, well, the one and only. The video you've been waiting for for over five years. You see, on September 12, 2017, I uploaded this video reviewing the Ferdinand. I titled it for a Ferdinand review type elephant. And you guys went ham. Over 1,000 comments, 2,000 likes. It's one of my best grossing videos of all time. And one that I have really fond memories of. Because in those five years, so much has changed. I've collected so much experience and knowledge and learned so much about myself. And I'm actually happy to announce that this will in fact be the last video of War Thunder that you're ever going to see on the Orange Doom Gaming channel. But first, a word from our sponsor, me. All right, before we continue to the actual content, I had to say a couple of words face to face. Um... There's only one video that's been more missed and more requested than the Ferdinand review, and that's Doom Time. Doom Time was a Q&A series I ran back in 2014, 2015. It was deleted in the Great Purge, and I regret that dearly. And I've been dreaming of it ever since. I've been planning to do it ever since, but I never kind of really got the grasp of it. I never quite made the decision. Um, and I'm, I'm done toying with the idea. I'm done um, sort of strategizing and, and coming up with excuses. I'm doing it tomorrow. It's coming back and it's coming back bigger and better than ever. I've decided against doing it in just a video format. I want to do it through a live stream and then upload that live stream to YouTube just to make sure that everybody gets the opportunity to consume it. Everybody gets the opportunity to be part of it. Um, and I'm a little bit scared to be frank, because this means a lot to me. This is perhaps the greatest thing that I'll ever create or the end of everything. That's how much this means to me. I I miss making content. I miss having the conversation with you. I miss having this interaction. I miss telling stories. But unfortunately, there there's a time and place where I have to say sort of goodbye to War Thunder. And I just have to cling away and, and do my own path. And I cannot do that if I'm tied as a character that I've created, this Orange Doom persona, if it's tied entirely and only to a game. And so whilst I respect it and enjoy it, and it's been this brilliant part of my life for nearly 10 years, I need to sort of sever ties with it and, and, and lead my own way. There are other things that I have passion for, namely chess, sports, cooking, and... I want to garnish those things, but I don't want to lose you. I don't want to just disappear because there's so many of you that have been part of this community that deserve to have more content. And there's new people that deserve to have information about life and experience about life. And we're all one big happy family. And for that to continue, I've decided that tomorrow, Sunday, the 2nd of October, 2022, at 6 p.m., Central European time. I'm going to be live streaming on twitch.tv slash the orange doom. All the links will be in the description below. And we're going to do one big banging stream. See you there. Well, damn, dude, that was kind of a kind of an emotional sponsorship segment. I mean, you know, wait, wait to bring the video down at the start of it. But fear not, because we are in the white colored Ferdinand on what is this map? The the the, the Sea of um, Azkaban, no way, that's from Harry Potter. The, uh, the Ariel Sea, I think that's what it is. But whatever, there's ships and tractors and boats and it's all a, a great big mixture, but actually one of the better looking maps that's ever been added to, uh, to War Thunder. Now, how it works from a play-by perspective, I don't quite know because this was my only time that I'm ever going to ever play on it. But fear not, because tomorrow's a new day and it's all going to be all good. Saul Goodman. Uh, yeah, what a shame they didn't get an Oscar for that or an Emmy or whatever the fuck it's called because that was genuinely one of the better shows of the last generation. Uh, back to the video, I'm getting sidetracked like I always do. The Ferdinand is a tank that I have probably the fondest of memories because when it was first added, this is back in Ground Forces beta testing, I'm pretty sure, when it was just Russia and just Germany in the game, um, the person who unlocked the Ferdinand had basically unlocked an indestructible just slug. I mean, nobody knew how to kill it because nobody knew where to shoot. Ah, uh, yeah, high explosive shell right into the bottom side of me. Lost me. Cannon lost me. Me tracks. What are we going to do now? Well, the good thing about playing 
these types of tank destroyers or heavy tanks is that partially the gameplay is all about you being shot but not dying. And so whenever you're playing these vehicles, you have to always just sort of enjoy the idea of soaking up damage. This is the, the thing that makes it so much more fun than playing, say, a light tank, because look at that. 80 gems are flying, heavy shells are flying, my game is spazzing out, my, I'm, I'm doing the whole like low rider, like twitching effect. I, I can't shoot back, I'm on fire now, <laughs> everything is broken. And yet I don't mind because I'm just going to sit here and just slowly repair away. I've got like, what, two crew members left alive, but they, they can't get to me. And frankly, the whole time in my head, it's just like Borat is just going, you will never get this, you will never get this. <laughs> That's just the reality. Is a tank like this is so, so fun to play because you don't really have it. It's like a, it's just a carefree machine. It's, it's a carefree type of way of living. It's almost like, um, I don't know, a BDSM for a woman. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it tightens you, but it also gives you this freedom within the limits. That, that probably made zero sense. So let me just let me just ignore that. Let me just say that um, we just got obliterated by a Sabo shell from a Stritzvan 81. God, I'm gonna I'm gonna ah, I'm gonna miss that actually. Now I'm, I'm regretting choosing this as the last video ever. I could make war from the videos on just just how to pronounce stuff. Oh no, wait, somebody else already did that. Ah, shit. Anyways, um. We're now going to sport in one of the rarest vehicles in this game, one of my favorite vehicles in the game. This is the ME262, uh, A2A if I'm not mistaken, and it is the one with Le Bombs. This is where things get funky and funny. See, it's actually a funny story because back in, in late World War, I think this must have been 1944 and 1945, um, Germany started to develop the ME262. And I think it was uh, one of the generals, I don't want to say it was Goebbels, but one of those guys was like, you know, look, Sir Hitler, um, we've designed this jet so it can go up against, you know, the enemy bombers. Um, because that's kind of the logical thing to do, right? You've got four 30 millimeter cannons, go after the damn bombers. And uh, in Hitler's mind, he was like, nine, 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 I want this to be a bomber. <laughs> it's just like, I guess we're here fulfilling um, Hitler's deepest fantasies of actually utilizing this plane for what it shouldn't have been used for and yet it was designed for and ultimately became a failure i think the engine this is one of the weird facts that i remembered um the engines apparently broke after a hundred working hours just imagine that so every hundred hours of flying you'd have to strip the engines off and replace them ludicrous I just hope those informations are actually correct, otherwise this will be one very, very awkward last video to upload. But regardless, I mean, I wanted to make the last video to be a bit of fun, you know, to be to be a bit more, um, <laughs> to bring me the joy, man. The joy that I got back in, I don't know, uh, early, you know, days of beta testing and aircraft and uh, 1.69. And oh, look me, shivers, it's a Typhoon. Now, a Typhoon is a quite interesting plane because um, it it's a little bit over-tiered, frankly. Never mind, it was up-tiered. Um, it, it's gone now. And the 262, I find to be one of those machines that just, it will live forever in my head. It will forever remain this sort of presence of destruction, just this like sort of entity of, of, of just, it just is, isn't it? The 262 is just phenomenal. Um, such a, such a marvelous machine, really, like a, a piece of technology that it will forever be imprinted in most of our heads as the ultimate, you know, here we go, straight to the second match, to the second type of action, and we just lost the cannon breach again. And we're in an open, um, not the smartest of locations for the Ferdinand, but there is a guy on my flank, and I think I was pretty comfortable just sitting here in my, you know, totally inconspicuous, whitely camouflaged Ferdinand. Um, but yeah, very fast gun repair, and I think there's an IS-2 that's about to pop into the screen here, if we can just, uh, just, yep, yep, there it is, scroll the screen, there it is, and there he goes, because there's no way of surviving a sight shot from this Ferdinand cannon. Um, but this match wasn't going to go quite as smoothly, because we're about to get obliterated by artillery, you can see that little orange smoke there on the left, really camouflaged itself quite well, and the artillery strike barrage is about to go out of the way. I have to say, these effects look actually pretty damn good, you know? Like, if you're playing this game for the, the sort of um, pleasure of your eyes, then yes, all the, the new effects actually are quite, quite good looking. 
gameplay, not so much. Anyways, um, it's brilliant. It's fast repairing. You've got those six crew members constantly working away on those tracks, and back we are moving. Now, we've lost the flank position. You can see that um, King Tiger is no longer there, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be a lost game. And I made a conscious decision here that instead of trying to control the flank, I'm going to just get myself an extra kill here, and there's a BMP. Um, those are quite an annoying little thing, you know. Fast firing cannon, he's a maneuver, he's got that ATGM thingy. And I'm in a bit of a, well, I'm, I'm sort of between a rock and a hard place, right? We have to decide whether or not we're going to push into the capture point and actually try to save this for the team in a Ferdinand. But there's another target over there, and I can't quite maneuver the tank, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little bit of force, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Figure out what it is. And it seems like it is, in fact, a... Um, yeah, I don't know what that is. I actually do not know what that is. Never mind, I know what that is. I played that years ago. It's one of those uh, Japanese... Um, mm -hmm, the Huri. The Huri Prutotipuru. The Japanese uh, tank destroyer. Very similar to the Ferdinand. Anyway, here's the M26 Super Pershing, if I'm not mistaken, and a horrible shot. Horrible shot. I should have killed him, and instead I've set him on fire, but his shot missed, so we get uh, we get to live another day. Now that is, I believe, four kills, and I also believe that is all the four kills we're about to get, because I'm pretty sure at some point in the next 30 seconds I get absolutely bombed to shit by an SU-9? I don't know. Something. Something comes flying out of nowhere and decides that this White Ferdinand is uh, is no longer viable to be on the battlefield. And I'm a little bit stuck here. I don't quite know what I was doing. I guess I was waiting for teammates. Oh, yeah, there's a bomb. <laughs> SU-9, no idea what it is. Um, looks like a fun jet to play, actually. You know, ah, never mind. I can never play it because I can't get back to the game. So, mm, mm, unlucky. Next match. Oh, yeah, this one's going to be quite a treat because this is one of those games that you start in the Ferdinand, you die in the Ferdinand, and then you start in the Ferdinand again, and you... You'll see what I mean. Now... It's funny, you know, what I find funny is that tank destroyers tend to spawn behind everybody else, which is a little bit counterintuitive, because you're the slowest, which means you have to now cover even more ground. But it also does make sense that you don't get into the way of people, like that other Ferdinand over there has just blocked the Tiger to Henschel. Speaking of which, I don't quite understand where that Ferdinand is going, because he's... Yep, that, that Panzer G is also stuck on a piece of, piece of driftwood. Very nice. And I'm having a hard time turning, because sand... Sand is, uh, oof, I don't like sand, you know, it's coarse, it's irritating, and it gets everywhere. Now, the playstyle of the Ferdinand was one of those that I had the hardest time with. Never mind, there's a Hellcat, and I, I, nope, nope, still a Hellcat there. That was a wasted kill. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, somebody stole it. Damn, the Ferdinand stole it, and he's an Xbox player. Must be using those keyboard hacks, I mean controller hacks. And then a brilliant play here from another Hellcat, I believe. Goes up to the top of the hill. Never mind, it was a M22 Locust. And then I get a beautiful, beautiful kill on another Xbox player. And now I'm stuck. I'm absolutely stuck now. I don't know if you can see it, but there in the top right corner, there's a Hellcat on top of the hill. And I'm just absolutely immobilized now. And it's going to be very difficult to position this tank in a way where I can take shots and not get obliterated because this there's a vast open field. Ferdinand works a lot better when people are attacking you at a smaller angle. As soon as that angle sort of exceeds 90 degrees, it's almost impossible to angle it in such a way that wouldn't be revealing some uh, juicy soft spots. But um, yeah, we're stuck here with the other Ferdinand coming in to help. Uh, there's smoke deployed, which is good, but not good enough for me because it's not, it's not close enough. And I'm still getting tossed. You can see the Hellcat there shooting at me. And I think he actually might be the one to kill me if he gets a proper angle. Right, all he has to do is move a little bit further up that hill, and then the um, the angle of the shot's going to be greater. And in fact, I think that's what happens. Let's have a look. Nope, another Hellcat <laughs> out of nowhere. See, finds the side just a little bit too exposed. So what do you do? What do I respawn? We go right back into it. We don't care. We're the Ferdinand. We're like, you know... It, it's This is the shit. This tank is the shit. I'm going to miss it. It was so fun to play. And 
the tactic we're going to use is, uh, uh, well, suicide, really. But yeah, this is how we do it. The true, the truest players comes back, and it's kind of weird seeing your own corpse on the battlefield, although this is another one of those brilliant features guys added where death tanks finally stay on the battlefield. Got to say, five years I've been gone, and after five years, finally they managed to fix one tiny little thing. Kudos. Big kudos. Um... Uh, no, there we go again. I think that might actually be the exact same Hellcat. Now, bombs are falling down, and at this point, I was 90% certain we're going to have to leave this game because it's that same Hellcat, and he's got a good angle on me, and I think I think this could actually be the end. 15 seconds, we have to survive, and if we can survive these 15 seconds, there's, there's still hope. There's still hope for this match. But, but honestly, right here, I was pretty, pretty sure this was going to end up in a massive defeat once more. Uh, lost the cannon barrel, there's artillery strikes everywhere, bombers are coming in. Um, my team doesn't have quite the best positioning, but I was ignoring my King Tigers that had a really, really good um, flanking scenario going on. And now what happens is that Yak Panther manages to eliminate the Hellcat. Now it's back on. Because we're both repairing. And, you know, a tank destroyer when it's immobile is limited to its range, but once you... Once you get it moving, oh my god, it becomes a disgustingly powerful thing. And so here, yeah, it's it's party time. And one of the best things you can do in a Ferdinand actually is the so-called straight push. You just you just drive and you fire. You know, a tank that's this heavy in mass doesn't really require a stabilizer. It just keeps on going. Oh, here we go. Another kudos for Gaijin. These craters from the bomb drops are brilliant. Where was this five years ago when I was still playing? Uh, another tank seems to be hidden in there, sort of in the the, the smoke. I can't quite get the hang of it. Um, another decision was made, do I go left and try to flank him, or do I go right? And the reality is, is that there's the Yak Panther on my left-hand side, so I'm not going to have to flank too much. I just have to spot this guy through the smoke, and he's firing, and I can't quite see him. And it's bizarre. Like, where is he? Almost like he's gone. And then Buyaka. It's an M5A1 Stuart. Yeah, not really a threat for the Ferdinand. So I moved up a bit here and uh, another Sherman rolled up. Um, I was thinking he's probably aiming for the cannon barrel, the breach. But I mean, at this point, he knows that there's just nothing he can do. Once you get this gun sight onto an enemy target, chances are it's going to get blown to smithereens. And now... Well, now we're doing that thing that this, you know, Orange Doom always did, which is rush the spawn point. No, sorry, push the spawn point. There's a difference. Learn it. You know, this is this is sort of what's what I find funny about about War Thunder is because I started playing so much chess in my pastime, and chess also consists of the the sort of the grand trio, the intro, the main game, and the end game, and and where we are right now, this is the end game. Of War Thunder. And for most matches, this is what it looks like. You're pushing towards the enemy spawn point. You're obliterating any tank you can see. You're trying to get that big capture point. Um, and inevitably, you're going to have some players that, well, they sit in the back of the map and they try to get some easy kills. This is one of them. Can't blame him for it. He's just trying to take the opportunity of, well, his whole team being gone. And he has to try to get some get some kills out of it. But yeah, I guess this really is the end game of War Thunder. And the you know, when you're looking at the classic match, this is the um, well, this this is the two capture point game. I'm, I've never been a fan of two capture point games because what they are, they're basically a team death match, but in a way, the capture point can make it a little bit annoying sometimes. Like at this point, there could be an enemy, you know, locust that's been driving across the entire map, the entire game, hiding, just going into your capture point just to make things a little bit more annoying, even though it's clear that they've lost the game. Uh, I've always been more of a fan of the classic triple capture point game. You know, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie, um, Ticket Bleed, and usually Ticket Bleed being the reason for the game to end rather than a classic team deathmatch. Um, but, you know, there's always there's always rooms uh, for development. There was always these ideas that we had all the way back in the day. Um, I, for one, would have loved to see the classic team deathmatch, which is what air realistic battles used to be. You know, back when it was still called um, historical battles. And oh, that brings back some some really funky memories, um, but yeah, I I have I have to clarify. I've had a really really fun time having this game as as my past. You know, it's gonna. I think I learned a lot from it too. You know, you can't argue that 
it's it's the most intelligent of games, but you can definitely make the argument it, it's historically tied. All the information on different vehicles and history and, and, and years and all these, this is what we should continue to learn, right? History is important to know, to not repeat the mistakes from the past. And um, I always try to sort of, you know, squeeze the juice out of everything that I experience. In this case, I'm trying to squeeze out as much positive um, information, knowledge, and experience. And for that, I'm I'm very very grateful to have been part, to have been part of the uh, the good old War Thunder. So for all intents and purposes, this is not just the end game of one match of War Thunder. This is the end game of one whole career of War Thunder. Um, even though I've done this quitting video, you know, a hundred thousand of times, there's no saying it probably still going to log into the game. You know, once every couple of a couple of months or years or so, because you know, curiosity killed the cat, and I am a cat person after all. So, um, you know, it's it's my due diligence. But the reality is that there are things that I feel I have to do, and this is why it's so important for me to do this thing tomorrow, to do this 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 talk and chat, and why live streaming has been so big for me. Um, I'm just enamored. I'm addicted to the idea of conversations. I realize that on an everyday basis, I love talking to people. I love learning. And, and I, actually, I love disagreeing, um, of all things. But I love running a discourse. And I feel like I would be living a very empty life if I left that opportunity behind, if I ignored this inner desire to have that conversation. And so I really hope that you enjoyed this video, that you enjoyed the journey. And I really hope that we see you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central European time over at twitch.tv slash the orange doom. Take care and uh, as always, safe flying.